Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Tonight what we're going to be doing is taking a deep dive into the one by one binning for the Dwarf 2 telescope using uh, our target on the Flaming Star Nebula and the Tadpole Nebula. What we're actually going to do is we're going to make sure we keep those both in the same frame. If you're interested in finding out how the results come out and also finding out how to get those two targets into the same frame, make sure you stay tuned for the rest of the video. All right, once you're inside of your Dwarf 2 app, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure that you calibrate your Dwarf 2. So to do that, uh, go to Astro Mode, to go to Feature and press the calibration. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your Dwarf 2 is polar aligned for this video, otherwise your Dwarf 2 will not be able to photograph both nebulas at the same time. Now, uh, what the calibration does is you need to make sure you have your Dwarf 2 first pointed at a part of the sky where there are no trees, clouds, or buildings in the way uh, that could obstruct the view of calibration. Uh, and then afterwards, you're going to let it close and reopen and take three different photos of the sky, basically to figure out where on earth it is and what the angle uh, of the tilt is as well. So allow that to finish. Um, and once that's finished, we're going to do another step. All right, calibration is now complete. So in order to do our focusing, we're going to go to the star Vega. Uh, go ahead and hit the confirm button. Uh, while it does the go-to, there's another thing I want to make sure you all understand that for this video, you need to make sure you have beta version 1.8.0 of the software installed or at least a new app uh, so that you can have the 2x2 two two, uh, binning turned off. That's extremely important if you want to get more detail, um, so make sure you do that. Now, before we actually do any of the focusing, if you're going to put a filter on, make sure you do that before you focus, but after you calibrate, otherwise you will not have a perfect sharp uh, focused image so make sure you uh, go ahead and put your filter on like I am doing right now and then you can do the focusing process right after okay so I now have my filter on what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and zoom in on one of the stars press the focus button and go ahead and press the plus and minus button until the star is the smallest size on the screen and once it's the smallest and sharpest that's when you know your image is perfectly focused all right, my Dwarf 2 is now in focus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the coordinates that I already have saved on Stellarium, uh, basically in the center of both of the deep sky objects. What we do here, uh, make sure I also turn up your exposure time to 15. And we go to more, no, sorry, go to, switch from auto go to and go to manual. Switch to your Stellarium app and you'll see the coordinates in the bottom left-hand side of the screen. It's 5, 20, and 31. Go ahead and type that in here. 5... 20 and 31 confirm and then you go back to the other coordinates 33 53 and 18 33 53 and 18 confirm and then confirm it and it will do the automatic go to allow that to finish once the go-to has completed if you see you need to do additional focusing just go ahead and do the same process as before pressing the plus and minus button until your image is perfectly focused. All right, now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set our settings. Obviously, once again, make sure you have binning off. For this image, we're gonna take 999 exposures. Set your exposure time for 15 seconds. Leave the IR on pass. And once you're finished, go ahead and press the shoot button to begin taking your photos. Afterwards, we will start bringing the data in to zero for further post-processing. Alrighty, it is now time for us to really do some work on the Flaming Star Nebula. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up our result.fit file. This took about 12 and a half hours to actually be able to uh, to stack and process correctly in the serial program because uh, using 4K resolution and 999 images, 
ends up resulting in a lot of lost storage space. And honestly, it took quite a long time. As I said, 12.5 hours and use up about 108 gigabytes of storage space. So uh, I'm going to emphasize again, make sure if you're going to do this type of thing, you know, take astrophotography very seriously. Make sure you get yourself a good laptop that has a lot of storage space in it and has a RAM that is fast enough to actually support uh, astrophotography imaging because otherwise you will be spent uh, stuck waiting a very long time in order for your stuff to actually stack and process correctly. So let's get started with the actual processing now. In the Zero program, again, I ran it through OSC preprocessing without dark spires or flats. Uh, the Bayer I had on, let's see, Bayer setting, it is taking a minute to pop up, so I apologize for the wait. Okay, Bayer pattern GBRG for Dwarf 2 images. Of course, if you're not going to use a Dwarf 2, then just make sure you have it set on uh, select Bayer uh, pattern based on image header. Now, let's go ahead and get started with the processing here. Obviously, switches to auto stretch. Uh, and as you can see, first off, we have a lot of this weird chromation uh, due to the ZWO dual band filter. Now, you won't notice this on Dwarf 2 images that don't have uh, the, this uh, ZWO dual band filter on. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure uh, about why this happens with that filter, but honestly, it, it's, in my opinion, it's okay. It doesn't look too bad, uh, and honestly, we can get rid of that a lot. So let's get started with the processing also. As you can see here, perhaps my dark images were not taken correctly because as you can see, there's a lot of that uh, green and red noise coloration, or maybe that's just the extra nebulosity kind of flowing through here. Uh, but let's really get started and check it out. As you can see, I accidentally still have my other serial program open for when we were doing M45. Let me close out of that. Uh, let's go ahead and exit that real quick. Anyways, okay, let's get started. Image processing, background extraction. First things first, we generate. Uh, obviously, we don't want to get any of that nebulosity in there, so it's kind of uh, remove, reduce the grid tolerance, generate again, uh, again, generate, there we go. Now, bump up the amount of samples that we have, generate, and reduce the grid tolerance one more time, generate it again, a little bit more, generate, there we go. That should be okay, uh, in my opinion, it looks all right. So let's go ahead and select a few more of these spots here that we missed, and hit apply, compute background, there you go, apply that. And as you can see, it evened out our entire image, so it doesn't look as weird anymore. Uh, let's go to remove green noise, hit apply. And it got rid of that ugly green tint. So maybe that background here uh, is in fact just a nebulosity and not a result of bad hot pixels uh, because of bad dark images. Honestly, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, so let's save that now. Uh, go to image processing. Let's see, The we're gonna do our color calibration, photometric, and I completely forgot what the uh, NGC number for that is. Let me look that up real quick. Uh, the Flaming Star Nebula. There we go. It is IC405. So let's go ahead and type that in. There we go. We have IC405. Go ahead and enter that. And we have IC045. Perfect. Hit OK. As you can see, I accidentally still have the wrong focal length in here, but somehow it, no, that is the right focal length due to the fact that we had uh, 4K resolution. So I'm not used to seeing that number. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get these out of the way. Uh, yes, there we go. We have this thing uh, now calibrated correctly. Let's save that. And now let's get rid of the stars here. Uh, go to start processing, start and start removal, pre-stretch and hit execute. Obviously, as always, make sure you have it in linear mode uh, when it's doing this so that it does not uh, glitch, which I've had had I've had happen several times uh, while trying to do the star net. It's glitched uh, for some unexplained reason. Uh, so it doesn't glitch whenever you have it in linear while it's running from star net. Uh, if you have it in auto stretch, that's when the glitch is going to end up happening in serial 1.2.0. Uh, so we'll allow serial to finish running star net. As you can see, it's about to finish up here. All right, as you can see, we have completely removed the stars here. Now we do have this weird chromation though, uh, but it doesn't look too bad, honestly, in my opinion. It doesn't look that bad. You can see the whole banding coming from the Flaming Star Nebula, uh, the Tadpole Nebula right here as well. Honestly, it's looking quite nice so far. So uh, first things first, we go to our generalized hyperbolic stretch. We bump this up to about 100, and we click on our symmetry point here and start dragging it up. Obviously, what we're going to want to do is just select a part here and reset, set that as our symmetry point and drag it up. 
There we go. Now we, again, we don't want to clip the black point incorrectly. So we're going to close this, go to the histogram transformation, pump this to one and drag up our black point without actually clipping any data. There we go. Hit apply here and we can drag it up just a bit more to get more darkness in here. Maybe we can just drag it up a tiny bit more as well. There we go. Hit apply and maybe we can bring up the nebulosity a tiny bit more. There we go. Apply. Hit close. And now let's save this. Let's go to our uh, color saturation and bring that up. Obviously, we don't want to oversaturate our image. Uh, so you have to be careful with that. Go ahead and lower that down a bit and do the color saturation one more time. Uh, again, not too much. Apply that and save that. Now, another thing that possibly you could do if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to get that HOO look, uh, what you do here is color calibration. You select your background. Use color uh, current selection, background neutralization, and then you select your nebula. Use current selection and apply that. Now what that does is it kind of brings out the HOO type look, uh, which is not really what I want this time, uh, but that does work wonders sometimes if you ever want to do that. Uh, but go back here, let's save this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and bring our stars back in here. Actually, let's do a noise reduction first. Apply. Okay, as you can see, the noise reduction is now complete. Let's save that again. And now let's bring the stars back in here. So go to star processing, star recomposition. Go to your starless result, open, star mask result, open, and start bringing the stars back in here. All right, so here we have the tadpole nebula and the, uh, the flaming star nebula. So we apply that and we hit close here. And here is our final image, of course. Uh, someone did mention to me that there is a way to get rid of this chromation from the ZWO uh, dual band filter, which I will be looking into uh, very soon. But honestly, for now, I think this is a very nice image. Dwarf 2 was able to do a very good job in regards to pulling both of these nebula out in just one image. Honestly, that's one thing that I absolutely love about Dwarf 2. Uh, the field of view, you know, the wild field of, wide field of view astrophotography is absolutely awesome because it allows you to get so much more uh, just into this one uh, small image. Uh, it obviously, it's a lot of detail as well. Uh, very high resolution, you know, very good imaging function that honestly, I'm always going to be impressed by what Dwarf 2 is able to do. Uh, also, Dwarf 2 is currently on sale due to the Black Friday sale that they have on their website. So make sure that you check out the link uh, in the description below if you're interested in purchasing one. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at Scott Camella, that's C-U-M-E-L-L-A, 2002 at iCloud.com. Again, that email is in the description. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this as a unique file. And honestly, like I said, I'm very happy with how this came out. Uh, in my opinion, it turned out very well. Uh, despite the fact that we have this weird chromation from the ZWO Dua Band filter. Honestly, I've noticed on a lot of Dwarf 2 images when using that filter, so I know it's not my own Dwarf 2. I know it's just a filter. Uh, perhaps it's just not compatible with the Dwarf 2. Uh, but please let me know what you think in the comments about this image. Um, honestly, it, it, it took a long time due to the fact that it takes forever to stack this kind of thing. Uh, but please leave a like and subscribe. And, uh, and honestly, it does help support the channel. And please stay tuned for future content. And also... Uh, one more thing, if you could recommend what type of content you would like to see in the future, I will definitely make sure I work on uh, creating that type of content for you all. So again, please do like and subscribe and stay tuned for future content. I wish you all clear skies, everyone.